The Wisdom Podcast is birthed out of the Wisdom Blog, a digital healing hub of inspired consciousness, sacred wisdom, and the divine teachings of authentic power, living one's truth, and spiritual, or as we call it, unconditional love. Many of the topics that we cover arise out of my work with clients who have chosen to live their life from a place of self-honesty and truth. And in doing so, they quite naturally began the journey inward, recognizing their authentic self and their capacity for being love and choosing to live as this in all moments. This is what makes it possible to experience authentic happiness easily. Each episode offers divinely inspired teachings and insight that will show you how to live consciously aware, to access your inner wisdom, and to help you make the best choices towards living a limitless potential. (laughs) Join me for consciously inspired truth divine wisdom, and new thought paradigms for living an infinitely abundant and love-filled life, here and now. From infancy, each of us has a natural inclination to self-soothe. Self-soothing is a way of relaxing our central nervous system of calming the body and mind, of experiencing relief and the absence of whatever stress we may be facing. We experience self-soothing from our caregivers as touch, as love, as food and sustenance, and as a comfortable and safe environment. For example, having the comfort of our favorite toys or blanket always available and a means of exploring our surroundings safely and to feel secure knowing that our needs are always taken care of. Parents who are sensitive and attentive to their child's needs and who also encourage their child to soothe themselves in healthy ways foster the important ability in their child to self-nourish and learn self-care from an early age. As a child, we instinctively look to calm ourselves in moments when we feel anxious, scared, angry, or sad. Learning to self-soothe is vital for healthy development, and it is an important skill for nurturing emotional and physical well-being. The ritual of self-soothing continues throughout our life. How we are comforted and soothed as a child influences the habits that we adopt to soothe ourselves as adults. We often don't consider self-soothing as a strategy for feeling comfort, ease, and relief each time we feel anxiety, fear, sadness, or any other unpleasant state, and yet it is perhaps the most important means of feeling better. We may not make the direct connection between what we or our caregivers did to comfort and soothe ourselves in childhood and what we continue to do today to alleviate tension, anxiety, fear, and to calm ourselves to feel better to escape momentarily from our life, and to recover after uncomfortable, unpleasant, or threatening situations, usually situations where we have a lack of control, where there is conflict or unrelenting stress, and in some cases, trauma. Self-soothing tendencies can be a healthy form of self-regulation and a means of creating optimal balance between mind and body if we choose behaviors that are helpful and healthy. So what do you do to self-soothe? Consider for a moment what you instinctively do to make yourself feel better.
or to escape. Or perhaps to reward yourself for a job well done. What do you do to cope when feeling pressure and stress that is self-soothing? Or to unwind and relax? Self-soothing as a healthy life skill is one form of self-care and the instinctive nurturing that is needed by all living beings in order to feel whole, well-being, and self-love. When we are taught how to provide for our needs as a child, we develop the confidence that we can offer ourself soothing and self-regulation in moments when we feel restless, anxious, and when our racing mind needs to quiet and soften. When we need a healthy escape or break from the busy routine of life, and as we aim to live in balance, to exist in an optimal state of functioning. We have all learned how to soothe ourselves in ways that allow for feelings of calm, relaxation, and comfort. Just think about any of the moments of your childhood where you felt nurtured and loved and ask yourself, how was I shown love, nurturing, and care? What did others say or do or provide for me that allowed me to feel nourished, soothed, and loved? And how did I give myself nourishment and care. Simply notice what memories are stirred here and what your reaction is of these. Here's another example. Perhaps you recall memories of family gatherings with food prepared lovingly, perhaps with your own participation included in this and with laughter and happiness and the encouragement of eating as one way in which love and nourishment was shown. Or perhaps you recall the simple yet loving gesture of your mother preparing your lunch to bring to school, which, when you ate it with enjoyment, allowed you to feel cared for and loved. Self-soothing behaviors such as eating are much like a calming drug. We feel satiated, our belly becomes full, and we experience a state of induced relaxation as our body utilizes much energy to digest our meal. If you were raised in a home where much emphasis was placed on food and eating together, and perhaps an abundance of variety and quantity of food, these same habits can become your source of feeling emotional comfort and pleasure. In contemporary life, present generations are being raised with a reliance on technology, and often the absence of parental attention or even presence. We have busy lives, and the way in which we structure and live in our family of origin has changed so much. Parents soothe their young children by allowing them to play with a cell phone or other device. Children are often provided with gaming technology to both occupy their time and as a means of entertainment that in many ways replaces or rivals playing with friends, being outside in nature, or having quality face-to-face -face interaction with family members. The habit-forming activities that subconsciously soothe children and adults alike, providing distraction from discomfort and agitation and from other real-world situations, 
can be constructive and meaningful, or they can provide a means of avoidance of what is uncomfortable. Further, one ability to connect with friends and others through our technology means that we may be relying more on the brief messaging that is said or not said and the constant comparison of what we see and consume through social media and the internet as the new normative habits meant to soothe us when really much of this can cause or inflame our pre-existing anxiety, insecurity, and self-loathing. When we feel anxious, anger, sadness, fear, or any other uncomfortable emotion, our natural inclination is to self-soothe. What we immediately want is to feel the absence of that unpleasant emotion. Without realizing what we are really craving, whenever we reach for our technological devices, or as we open the pantry or fridge in search of something to eat, especially when we are not hungry, or if we reach for a particular drug of choice, is indeed the calming, soothing, and pleasant feeling that is preferred, and often similar to our experiences from an earlier time. Different forms of self-soothing may also be a strategy learned as a coping mechanism in a home where there was much tension, conflict, and duress. These self-soothing solutions become adopted instantaneously and often without sorting through our emotions to figure out what we might actually need. I'd like you to consider the following. While self-soothing is instinctive, the method by which we actively soothe ourselves to achieve a state of calmness or any preferred state is something that is learned and therefore can be replaced with a healthier method specific to what our true needs are and often with less effort than we might think. The power of self-soothing lies in your ability to recognize the importance of being self-aware, mindful of your needs at any given moment. When you are out of touch with or not attending to your basic fundamental needs, or if you do what you've always done to self-soothe rather than take notice of what you truly need and how you might best give this to yourself, you will likely resort to the well-learned strategies that are already in place, most of which originated out of what you were taught and perhaps what you developed out of necessity in order to evoke feeling a way that is desirable for you. The range of desired feelings and states of being that we are often in search of include some of the following. Relaxation, comfort, escape, relief, and energized. And so self-soothing may come in many forms, some of which are less healthy and may include alcohol, prescription and non-prescription drugs, smoking, pornography, gambling, shopping, and sex. When we use a host of other behaviors as self-soothing mechanisms, most often what we are in search of is the quick release or relief from anxiety and duress and to feel better immediately and effortlessly. As much as we may not feel comfortable being alone with our thoughts and our feelings, especially if we tend to remain fixated on a problem or an ongoing problematic situation, if we use our technological devices as distractions, if we use food or other addictive substances and behaviors to soothe and relax us, numbing our anxiety and worrisome thoughts, 
we never learn how to achieve calmness and a soothing state of comfort, contentment, and inner peace naturally. Ironically, this feeling of inner calm, yet alert, clear-mindedness, happens to be what our natural blissful state is, one that we feel when we are in balance or in a state of equilibrium. And in those precious few micro moments, as you first awaken, before your brain jumps to thoughts about all that you have to do today and what problems or situations may be awaiting you, there is, however brief, a gentle yet alert calmness a state of blissful inner peace that is right there if you look for it. Your body and mind begin in this state upon waking. It's just that you too quickly pull yourself out of this equilibrium into worry, needing to do versus be, and focusing on the near and distant future or past rather than the experience of the present moment. It may be our human nature to actively focus on all that is needed to be done. However, we tend to focus on the problems rather than actively working towards solutions. As calmness and relaxation are what we experience naturally after exercise and physical activity, and in being outdoors and in nature, these may be considered among the best solutions for self-soothing. We don't need to experience an intense workout to feel the effects of clarity and alertness of mind and calmness in our body. Often, and I remind clients of this, a simple 15-minute walk outdoors where you can focus intently on your breathing and how you feel in your body is more than enough to shift your mood state and allow for some of the natural high that comes from the release of endorphins during this activity, the breathing of fresh air, and the beauty in nature. Ideally, you want to find an activity or a variety of them that you can look forward to and that become one of your go-to sources for alleviating stress and tension while soothing and calming you, and to use these often. If you can practice bringing your attention into the present moment, to be consciously aware or mindful as you are physically active as much as possible, it will only heighten both your experience of that activity and your skill of being present, calm, and soothed. A feel-good state is what we are all in search of. It is also a feeling that we have become reliant or dependent on, and at times even addicted to, if we have the means of accessing what will give this to us, even if it is short-lived. A simple example of how we are dependent and addicted to a particular state of being lies in a simple behavior for so many who begin the day by ingesting a stimulant to ramp them up, to help them be productive, alert, and sharp-minded, and which gives an elevated hit of adrenaline, all easily contained in the acceptable caffeine buzz of our morning beverage. Healthy self-soothing is important and necessary for creating and maintaining balance and a naturally induced positive effect. By being willing to examine your habitual behaviors and learn strategies for self-soothing, you can identify which habits are less healthy. Acknowledging what is not an ideal solution to the stresses of life and any emotional or physical pain allows you to then Seek sustainable ways in which you can be in control of how you feel and your choices. A healthy means of self-soothing supports productive life practices, contemplation and understanding 
rather than avoidance and distraction from what may need your attention. And for you to be able to heal and feel whole. Three of the most readily available and natural sources of feeling in balance and in control as productive and healthy means of self-soothing are exercise, sleep, and meditation, which can also include prayer. And if we can use one or ideally all of these healthy self-soothing strategies in moments when we are anxious, agitated, feeling out of control, upset, when we crave a comfort food or substance, when we are angry, fearful, or conflicted, we will radically change how we feel to that of being in control, able to function at a high level, in balance, and successful in our ability to thrive in the world. Learning to self-soothe in healthy ways and to do so often throughout the day means a greater likelihood that you will feel and be at your best, since you are able to curate this often and as needed. You will also be able to overcome what unhealthy habits or addictions you may have been using and which have maintained a powerful hold over you. Since you now understand your natural and instinctive yearning for feeling positive, comforted, nourished, and loved, all have their origins in self-regulation, self-soothing, and in being able to take care of your needs in a healthy way. For my client David, a high-functioning business owner and entrepreneur, who began using alcohol some 10 years earlier as an immediate means of relief from the pressures of the day and as an escape from the constant churning of thoughts that he felt helpless to control. Meditation, exercise, and a return to a healthy sleep regime became the most effective means of bringing his life back into balance for calming and quieting his mind deliberately, and for recharging his body naturally. There are many ways to use meditation, both as a formal and informal practice, to experience the moving of one's body, whether through unstructured activity or formal exercise, and to explore the many benefits of sleep as rest including power naps of specific lengths, as well as deep and healing restorative sleep. Use a combination of these healthy practices as short 10 to 15 minute mini breaks as you need to refresh or soothe your mind and body. And when you are pushing yourself too hard, all are a perfect, and healthful means of self-regulation, self-care, and self-soothing. And I'm also going to share a link for a really helpful meditation. It's 15 minutes, and it will teach you all about using your breath as a way to self-soothe. You don't need to be skilled or proficient in meditation to use this but it will give you a wonderful introduction to meditation practice. And even more importantly, a tool for using your breath to self-soothe. Choosing to live in a state of optimal homeostatic balance helps bring to light the fact that self-soothing is a necessary and important life practice. Most ideal methods are quite simple and require very minimal effort to practice readily you can begin to implement helpful self-soothing strategies as you learn how to be mindful. And by practicing conscious awareness of how you feel and what you are in need of in any given moment. One of the simplest and most powerful ways to self-soothe, and it's also free, 
is to rely on your breath as a means of feeling calm and returning your attention to the present moment. In the present moment, you can best assess how you feel and what your needs are. In the present moment, this is important, there can never be anxiety, fear, or sadness. Because in the present, you are simply being. Try it with me now, just for a moment. Notice how you feel upon taking several conscious breaths. Allow yourself to breathe deeply. This is the body's most natural and effective way to self-regulate and to return to homeostatic balance. Conscious, mindful breathing is something that you can do anytime and as often as you wish. This is a strategy that allows you to return to and live mindful, attentive in this moment. So after a few deep conscious breaths, identify how you feel. It's helpful to know what we are feeling as a way of being self-aware. Next, you can ask yourself, how do I want to feel? This question directs you to the conscious truth that how you feel is a function of your free will choice and not dependent on something that must happen or that you must have in order to feel happy, relaxed, calm, or any other desired mood state. Then be sure to ask yourself, what do I need in this moment in order to feel this? And how can I give this to myself? What you are teaching yourself by answering these questions is how to self-regulate, self-soothe, and to be in control of how you want to feel. Self-soothing then becomes a regular practice of life as you choose how you wish to feel and then seek this deliberately. You may be surprised at how effective it is to decide your state of being and then to live this. Choose how you want to feel and how you will soothe yourself based on what will support and nourish you best. Build natural breaks of healthful habits of mindfulness, breathing, meditation, activity, and being outdoors for a time each day as you breathe with awareness and presence. These are the most simple and helpful strategies for experiencing heightened mental clarity, calm, for self-soothing, and for being engaged in the present moment. Use your breath as a natural method of experiencing self-awareness. As you become experienced with conscious, mindful breathing, as one simple yet helpful strategy, you begin to see that conscious breathing is a powerful means of helping you reestablish focus, of calming your body and mind, and for feeling soothed. I'm also going to leave for you another gift. In the description, a link to my blog post of why taking a deep breath feels so good. It's all of the science behind why breathing is so effective. And if you think about it, how perfect it is that something that we do in every moment and that we do unconsciously, which means we don't even have to be aware that we're doing it for it to happen, is the exact process of the body that allows us to self-regulate and to feel calm, soothed, and relaxed. I hope that you'll check out the link. It's a really valuable read. And finally, the enhanced awareness that you experience from conscious breathing will also help you identify what you need in any given moment 
so that you are able to provide this for yourself. Most of us need only the simplest of things when we feel stressed, worried, angered, or any other unwanted emotion. Any of your unhealthy choices are the automatic habits and unconscious actions that you had previously learned and which have never truly been the right solution for feeling authentic happiness. Your breath is the connection between mind and body, and it is also a way for you to cultivate a connection with and to experience the divine, what we might call God, Allah, Source, and Universal Consciousness. And finally, the name of my client has been changed to maintain confidentiality. Additional details or circumstances may have been altered in order to ensure the utmost privacy. Thank you so much for joining me here, and I hope that you'll check out the other episodes in the Wisdom Podcast wherever you are listening. Sharing with you all of my love. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode of the Wisdom Podcast. To hear more, please check out the other episodes here, and then join me at DorothyRatusny.com where you can share your questions and feedback from this or any episode with me, and where you'll also find the Wisdom blog, the inspiration for this podcast, the latest online courses that I teach, my YouTube videos, an extensive library of free guided meditations for you to experience and enjoy, plus other special offerings of love. Please also visit me on social media and say hello. Allow yourself to go within, to access your inner wisdom, and to live this. Awaken your authentic power, live your truth, and be love. This is Dorothy. Namaste.